All right, everyone. I am so excited. Are you folks ready to jump into today's Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge? My name is Voodoo Val and I'm going to be your host yet again on this beautiful Thursday morning for me here in Northern California. Um, and we're going to dive into sort of how you folks can get involved with the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. If you have never been involved with the Creative Challenge before, we're going to talk about why this Daily Creative Challenge is so special. Um, and we're also going to kind of jump in and take a peek at the Discord a little bit because things have been pretty popping over there. Uh, yo, what's up, Sam? Annika, save your work. <laughs> it's good to see you. Also, if you guys have not been um, tuning in to the streams throughout the day, um, further on, uh, Annika Agarwal, one of our good, good friends um, here on Adobe Live, um, is a guest this week, so you definitely don't want to miss that stream. Maybe the creature is a walking... <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's good to see you, General Kenobi. Hello there. Tim Lunas, Sean, Beatrice, Kevin, Fairy. Um, I see Frank, I see Susan. Um, Alvar, Ted, Ted, my friend, who's been so helpful in the Discord, thank you so much. Sinalagos, it's good to see you. Um, all right, I am going to kind of bump over here to the challenge page, the challenge page, um, really quick and show you folks what is going on over here. Um, quick reminder, however, first, before I do that, um, if you are over on the YouTube channel and you're wondering who I'm saying hello to this morning, ooh, what happened? Why? My, my whole stream lapse just did a weird somersault. There we go. Um, if you're wondering who I'm talking to and why I'm calling out people that you don't see is because I am reading the Behance chat. So if you folks want to head over to behance.net slash live, that is where I will see you. That is where you will get all the helpful, wonderful resources and links and things that you need um, to uh, kind of work on the challenge with me and all that good stuff. Uh, but without further ado, let's jump over here. This is the challenge page, behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop, you know that you're in the right place. Uh, if you see the July 26th through August 20th date up here at the top, you can scroll down here and see that every day we unlock a challenge for you. Uh, we've gone through making a mood board already. We've done an informational promo, which was super fun. And today we're going to be doing illustrated creatures, which I'm super pumped about. It's going to be super awesome. Uh, we're going to do some painting and things and wink wink uh this challenge is going to kind of tie into a later challenge so i hope that you will join us for this one if not um, i will make sure that you have my assets for the future challenge that needs um what we create today uh but if if you guys are going to do the challenge today then you will have really cool assets to do something pretty nifty in the future uh, which i'm very excited about cladi hello it's good to see you all right, so we are going to jump into illustrated sea creatures today. Uh, why are we doing illustrated sea creatures? Why does everything seem to be sea creature themed? Well, I shall tell you. <laughs> I shall tell you why. I'm going to pop over here real quick and um, make sure I pull up the proper tab real quick. There we go. Um, so we have a Create Waves sort of contest project going on with Adobe um, at the moment. You can grab actually the super cool Create Waves uh, creative CC library uh, for yourselves to kind of have some assets to work on these projects with because this has been marked as um, the ocean decade, the decade of ocean conservation, um, to take care of our ocean, to explore and uh, and learn more about the mysterious realm that is the ocean um, and put a little more thought um, and time and things into how we take care um, of our, our fellow uh, ocean creatures um, on this planet with us. So uh, we're going to be kind of diving into ocean themed projects for the entire DCC because if you folks would like to enter the Create Waves contest, you can. You can and you can probably use one of our contests or one of our challenges as a starting point for this contest. Um, I'm going to do a weird thing here and I'm going to bump that down because that's weird that you can see my little task bar there. Um, all right, so it is also, it's nine in the morning and it's 101 degrees here where I am. <laughs> um, okay, so I am going to kind of direct you where you can jump into the Discord, um, the Discord link uh, where you can kind of jump in, get some mentor feedback and grab some of these helpful links and learn more about the Create Waves um, project is over here. If you go to um, bit.ly slash PS Discord, you want to make sure that P and S are capitalized because that will send you to the proper server and you will find yourself in a nifty little place that looks a lot 
like this. Um, this is our Discord. Um, these are all the wonderful things that people are posting. Um, Sam Peterson is in here dishing out the uh, the knowledge and the feedback and all that good stuff. Um, Ted is in here dishing out the knowledge and the feedback and all that good stuff. And I am in here um, posting some cool pro tips for you folks who are maybe a little bit unsure about how to create um, a case study. So you can find some case study pro tips in there. Um, come in here, check out everybody else's work, um, check out what everybody is doing, look at everybody else's designs, give some feedback, make some friends, um, share your own work, get some feedback on your stuff, you know, all that all that good stuff. Um, so please, please do that. I would love to see what you create. I'm going to go through some more of these later today. Uh, but for now, tis time uh, actually to jump in to our project for the day. This is uh, challenge number three. Illustrate a sea creature using simple lines, shapes, and textures. And this is what we're going to do today because you know every one of these episodes is going to be um, kind of a uh, kind of a little mini Adobe Live Planet Earth. So today we're going to be illustrating anything that you want to illustrate, really. You can you can choose whatever you want, but I am choosing to illustrate manta rays because I think manta rays are fabulous. And we did talk a little bit about manta rays on our first day, our challenge zero day. Um, and we also, if we go into our Create Waves library, if you have added the Create Waves library to your piece or to your um, creative cloud, you will see actually a lot of images of manta rays that are really wonderful. This one actually may, may actually be a stingray, but I know for certain that this one down here is a manta ray. And there is also an image of my favorite ray. Yeah, this could be a, this could be a stingray too. I don't think so. I think this is the spot, spotted manta. Um, but these down here, where are they? Where are they? They're so amazing and incredible and I really want to show them because they're like some of my favorite creatures ever in the whole, uh, in the whole ocean. Let me see, maybe I passed it. Um, I think probably the oceanic giant manta ray is my most favorite um, ray. And there should be a picture. There we go. There we go. This is it. Look at this big boy. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we're going to be illustrating and painting up some manta rays today. And it's actually going to be fairly easy because a manta ray, if you break it down to its basic shape and form, is a pretty simple shape. Um, so I'm going to show you a bunch of different ways to kind of illustrate this shape. And then I'm going to show you some interesting techniques for how to paint it up or illustrate it up if you're using a stylus or if you are using a mouse. So let's dive into it. So you can kind of take a look at these. These are the images that are um, given to you in the Create Waves li library, as I said, um, and I just kind of paint bucketed in a color here. I'm going to make a new layer for myself with Control Shift in, um, and I am going to actually start with the brush tool. I'm going to start with my brush tool um, and I am going to paint out just a shape of a manta ray um, and I'm going to just do a top down view of the back because I think that it's it's actually really really cool to be able to paint the manta ray from the top down so you can get its cool patterns and all that good stuff and I'm going to give you some manta facts along the way um, because who doesn't want manta facts um, actually hold on let me let me grab I'm going to grab this color real quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna make my background that color so I can do some cool blue over the top of this. All right, so let me grab my brush. I'm gonna maybe snag this color. No, we'll snag this color. Um, and then I'm gonna close my libraries here, grab my brush tool, press B on the canvas, and I'm going to make sure that I have my smoothing cranked down. And I am going to grab, um, we could actually use like the hard round brush maybe with a tiny bit of smoothing. Um, okay, so one way that you can do this is you can kind of just get this good like triangle shape going on. If you have a stylus and you're able to kind of come in here um, and start making like half of this manta, if you want to, you can kind of sketch it out like this, maybe control J or command J if you're on a Mac, you can right click, flip horizontal and start building out an actual manta ray. Um, and this is a way that I would kind of approach this myself. If I, 
you know, if I was doing this just, you know, with my stylist, I would start creating a shape like this and just start sketching in this interesting form of a manta. But not everybody in the chat today is actually going to have the luxury of being able to create like this because not everyone has a stylus. So I'm going to throw that one up there. That is just kind of one idea. If you're able to use a Cintiq or use a, a drawing tablet or something of the like, um, there is a manta for you. There you go. It's a, it's a basic manta shape, but we're going to work with it. Um, next, if you are actually, let's convert this to smart objects. Let's convert that to smart objects so that I can resize it as I want. And I'm not going to lose a bunch of quality instead of trying to resize a rastered image. Okay. Um, now, a thing that you can do is you can also use your mouse with smoothing turned on and a possible bit of symmetry. So I'm going to come up here to this beautiful little butterfly here, and I'm going to set our symmetry to vertical. I'm going to set it to vertical right here. I'm going to make a new layer, control shift in if I can. Hold on. Let me control shift in. Boom. So I have a, a new layer here. I'm going to hide our Manta. I'm going to crank our smoothing up to like 55. Um, and then what I can do is I can actually start drawing. I'm using my mouse right now. Start drawing a shape like so. Boom. Start drawing a little, a little Manta shape. There we go. There we go. And then you can make your brush bigger and you can come in and start coloring that in if that's how you want to create your manta. And it's like I said, it's a fairly simple shape. It's not something that you have to be like a perfect 100% excellent accomplished illustrator to attempt. It may still be difficult for some of you performing the challenge uh, for today because hey, maybe illustration is not your forte. Maybe you are unfamiliar with it and it's not all that easy for you to do. However, I think that of all the things we could choose for this theme for you to start with, if you're kind of new uh, to, um, to illustrating, this is a pretty good place to begin. Um, so we've got a we've got a little manta here, and then I can come up and I can turn my symmetry off, and then I have I have a manta, and I can come in and clean it up if I want. I can hit E on my keyboard um, to access my uh, my eraser. I can hold Shift so that when I erase a little bit, it kind of um, tapers that down and keeps it straight for me. Um, and there we have another another interesting manta ray. Um, and I will put that right up here. Let's unhide our other one. We've got these interesting shapes. We're actually kind of making, making, ooh, I am doing a weird thing here. Let me, I don't wanna do a, why is control Z oh, set to transform again? That is strange. That is very weird. Um, I just updated, so that is a weird thing. I might have gone into the settings and done a, uh, or no, that's con showing me the control Z is set to unzoo, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing control T and it's like retransforming. Um, it's, I think control T is set to transform again, which is odd. So instead of transforming, I'm just going to press V on my keyboard and I'm going to use my move tool for that today. Um, and I will figure that out at a later date, um, which is probably going to be right after this stream. So now we've got two Bantas, okay? Uh, and then the last way that you can do this, if I make another layer with control shift in, um, is we can use our pen tool, uh, which is uh, P on your keyboard, um, unless you have set P to something different. Otherwise, it looks like this right up here. It's got a little uh, icon just like that. Um, and you can actually, if we go like this, I can click, I can hold shift so that it makes me like kind of a perfect... Um, uh, line, perfectly straight line here. And I can come in, kind of do something like that, maybe something like that. I'm going to give this one kind of some, some pointed wings, I think, like this. I think I'm going to go for this kind of Manta. Uh, I'm going to say make it a shape. And I am going to, yeah, that is doing a, I must have hit a, a strange, um, a strange button on my keyboard when I bonked my hand on it a little bit ago, because that's a little odd. I wonder if anyone in the chat knows what that is. 
Is it recommended we use the colors uh, theme in the Create Waves assets? You can if you want to, um, but it is your project, project ultimately, and you can pretty much do whatever you want, I think. Um, Mantifacts. Yes, we're going to get Mantifacts. Um, did you check your... Let me see. Tutorial circuit. <laughs> Station Earth, thank you. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, so uh, I'm gonna, let's see. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do a really quick detour. I'm gonna go into um, File, um, Edit, actually. I'm gonna come into Preferences. And I'm gonna go into, I should have Interface. No, Keyboard Shortcuts right here. And I'm going to go into Image. I should see a free transform someplace. I don't really want to spend very much time on this, but I would like to be able to solve this just in case you folks ever find yourself in this. Um, it might not be an image, it might be an edit. Okay, let's see. Copy merged, paste special, blah, blah, blah. We're free transform, control T. Oh, no, transform again is control shift T. I want this to be control T. Control, control T. That is so strange. I'm only pressing control T. I wonder if my shift key is stuck in some way, or I wonder if I could um, do control T by selecting my other um, control over here. Nope, that is very strange. Um, I don't know why exactly that's happening, but I will resolve that as soon as possible. So I'm just gonna use these. So um, I think I'm gonna go with my tiny Manta here and we are gonna use the last few minutes to talk about Manta facts. Oh, I'm trying to transform yet again and I cannot. I can't do it. Um, let me see if I can come in to here, undo transform, and I'm just going to zoom in then. That's how we will navigate around this is I will, huh, that is so weird. I am, I am really not, that's never happened to me before. Uh, maybe we can make a larger ray because I can't even zoom. Let me see, hold on. I can actually, hit my Z key and I should, there we go. Okay. Perfect. 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 All right. We're going to get through this. We're going to resolve this issue. So this is a, a less clean Manta shape. Um, but this is what we're going to do. So the, um, let me see and make sure I have this. I'm going to create a new layer, control shift in or command shift in if you're on a Mac. And I'm going to set that layer to a clipping mask. Um, and while I show you some cool techniques for how to create, um, a Manta's back, we are going to talk about the things that make Manta super, super awesome. I'm gonna turn my symmetry on again. We're gonna jump back into vertical here and I'm going to position this uh, right here, kind of in the center of this Manta. Hit enter, grab my B, press B for brush. I wanna make sure I'm not on pencil here. Um, so the Oceanic Giant Manta is actually, I don't know if you knew this, but one of the smartest fish in the ocean. In fact, um, it is said that it is possible that the oceanic manta, oceanic giant manta, is possibly self-aware. Um, a very loose mirror test has been conducted on the oceanic manta, and it was found that they displayed very interesting kinds of behavior when they interacted with their own um, with their own reflection. I'm going to start adding some dots in here. We're going to do kind of a spotted manta. Here, we're gonna add some, some fancy dots. Um, and they are also some of the largest things in the ocean. So a lot of times people see the shape and they're like, oh, what a cute stingray. No, not a stingray, folks, because the oceanic giant manta can actually reach sizes of up to 29 feet wide. That is wider than some vans. That is wider than some bus vehicles. Um, and they can weigh over 6,600 pounds, okay? These are massive creatures and they are incredibly gentle. They are incredibly gentle. They are the kind of creatures that love uh, to just kind of coast around real nice like um, in the ocean, um, they are kind of like 
gigantic birds of flight that are just underneath uh, the surface of our ocean, um, and they are some of my favorites. Another thing that's really cool about them is that though they are enormous, though that they though they are huge, they jump, folks. They jump. Um, you can actually see when uh, attracting the ladies, the oceanic giant manta actually leaps out of the water and coasts across the sky to belly flop and look super cool in front of some chick they're trying to impress. Um, I'm impressed. I don't know about you folks, but I am I am super impressed. Uh, so I've got my, uh, my spotted manta kind of created here. We've got a few more minutes. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to um, make my brush a little bit larger here. Um, I'm gonna kind of bring, I'm gonna have to do this manually because I've done a strange thing um, and kind of lost my hotkey capabilities, which now you folks can see why I always tell you hotkeys, 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 because they're such a huge part of my, um, of my, my workflow um, and they make things so much faster. Now you can actually see real time how much faster hotkeys learning those shortcuts really make your, your, your workflow because now I'm doing everything kind of manually. Um, so I'm going to come in here and grab a lighter color and still um, on this, um, this is kind of a kind of spotted. Um, I can come in and kind of do some some bright colors um, if I want. Maybe something a little softer. Um, oh, I can't do actually my erase. Um, let's see. I'm gonna have to. I'm really having to like maneuver my uh, my workflow here. This is putting me to the test. Um, so I'm just gonna add like a blush of some, some white here. And then I think in my last few moments, I'm gonna do a pattern on this manta that is a little closer to the true oceanic giant kind of, um, kind of look. Um, so I'm gonna hide that one. That's like kind of an interesting uh, idea for you folks. But the oceanic giant manta most commonly actually has kind of a dark, uh, a dark sort of texture on it. Let me make a new layer, control shift in. I'm going to turn that into a clipping mask as well. Um, and let's see how fast we can power through this making, let's make a second Manta. Um, I am going to, let's see, that's, that's pretty good. I'm gonna make sure I have like a dark blue. I'm gonna fade, ooh, we want it even darker. I'm gonna come over here. Let's do something like this. We're gonna make this dark, okay? Now the oceanic giant manta is usually denoted by the interesting T design, the T shape design on top of its head. So it has like this tiny little um, portion of, of the head that's actually got like these white shapes. So I'm just gonna kind of blur in like that. I'm gonna snag myself a brighter color like so. Crank my brush size down um, and I'm gonna come in and see if I can't place some, some brighter manta kind of, kind of spots here. Let's see if we can do that. Let me bring those in like so. And this looks more like the, the oceanic giant gray to me, something that has like that little dark tea zone there. Um, and then we can kind of put some, some brighter uh, color on here. It's kind of a little bit like painting traditionally now because I don't have my control Z. So I'm really actually forced to um, be a lot more deliberate with my, with my brush strokes here, which is actually not bad practice. So you know what, happy accidents. Uh, this is actually a-okay with me. I'm gonna turn my flow down, maybe. Um, you can experiment with flow, as you notice here. Now I have, I can go over it and keep brightening that. Um, if I want, I'm gonna go ahead and cover this up because um, I don't actually want that there. Um, but uh, kind of changing the flow like that will um, kind of make what you're, what you're creating a little bit softer. Um, so let me make sure I am. Maybe we'll try this round pressure brush. Um, turn the flow down, select this, and then I'll come in, kind of really blur this color up. Cause I don't want to blur it out. I don't want to cover it up totally. I just kind of want to do something interesting like that. And maybe finally we'll take a little bit of this light color and give him um, some texture down under his arms. So that is all the time I have today, folks. I don't want to get cut off. I apologize for some of the technical difficulties. Those were very unexpected, but I hope I still got the point across to you, um, uh, all of you folks watching today. And I hope, I hope, hope, hope that you learned a little bit about the gentle giants of the sea, AKA the gigantic, the giant, the wondrous oceanic mantra. 
Um, yeah, what's up, Megan? It's good to see you. What's up, Panda? Um, so that is all I can do. I, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna restart. I just didn't want to restart during the stream because I only have about 30 minutes, but I gotta go. So I'll see you folks later today. Adios, everyone.